Good morning, children. Today we move on to the last lesson that is Papa Panav's Christmas, special Christmas. Lesson 4.6. I hope you'll have your pencils ready. It was Christmas Eve and although it was still afternoon, light had begun to appear in the shops. And houses of the little Russian village for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escape from closed shutters. Scurried means to hurry, uh, uh, hurry, take hurried steps. Okay, like it's not literally run. It's take small steps and walk quickly. Old Papa Pana, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. <clears throat> the sound of happiness, the bright lights and the faint, a delicious smell of Christmas cooking. Faint means very uh, light. It's not very. Uh, it's not a very strong smell. Okay. Reminded him of past Christmas times when his wife had still been alive and his own children, own children, little means when his children were small. Now they had gone. Maybe they had gone far away to live separately. They had gone for in search of work that they haven't mentioned over here. His usually cheerful face with the little laughter or wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles looked sad now. Now laughter wrinkles, what are laughter wrinkles? Generally you will find people who laugh a lot, who are smiling a lot. They will have little wrinkles around their eyes. Yes. And around the face, around the lips. Because uh, your face, that's where you will find a wrinkle when you are smiling, when you are laughing okay but he went back indoors with a firm step put up the shutters and set a pot of coffee to heat on the charcoal stove then with a sigh he settled in his big armchair you know what is a sigh you breathe out <sighs> yes that's called a sigh papa panav did not often read but tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible and slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them in the inn. Inn is a small hotel, a very small hotel, so that Mary's little baby was born in the cow shed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panam. If only they had come here, I would have given them my bed and I could have covered the baby with my patchwork quilt to keep him warm. What is patchwork quilt? A quilt is a it's sort of a blanket which you cover yourself. And uh, But the only thing is, it's, if, it, if you're talking of a quilt, it generally it's rezai, what you say in Hindi rezai. Yes? Generally, you have some little thin layer of a cotton in that. In between, there will be a layer of a cloth on top, a cloth down, and a slight layer of cotton in between. Okay, if not cotton, generally the poor people, what they do, they old clothes, they cut it into squares and make patches out of it, stitch the patches together, and then make bed sheets out of it. Okay, he read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Splendid means wonderful, great gifts. Papa Panau's face fell. Fell means he was sad. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought sadly. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up, and stretched his long arms to the shelf high up in his little room. He took down a small dusty box and opened it. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panau smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he had remembered. The best shoes he had ever made. Now I can ask you in this question when I put, uh, supposing I put this passage and I ask you, what was Papa Pranav's profession? So from this passage you can understand, it's not given anywhere, but then they are writing, they were the best shoes he had ever made. So he was a shoemaker by profession. Okay, remember. I should give him those, he decided. 
as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and the further he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes, so that he closed them, just for a minute. In no time at all, Papa Panau was fast asleep, and as he slept, he dreamt. He dreamt that someone was in his room, and he knew at once, as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You have been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panau, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day and I will visit you. But look carefully, for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panau awoke, the bells were ringing out and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Filtering means coming to the shutters. You know, shutters, maybe there was an, a mesh over there, you know, jali, what you say. Maybe there were, it was made with pieces of wood. So when you open it, there is slight ray of light coming through in between each piece of wood. Bless my soul, said Papa Panna. It's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched himself for he was rather stiff. Means he is old. So if old people generally they sit in a place for a long time, they feel that the, their joints have become stiff. Yes. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he look? Would he be a little baby as at that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter or the great king that he is God's son? He must watch carefully the whole day through so that he recognized him however he came. Now, he was wondering in which form Jesus would come, whether he would come as a baby, whether he would come as a carpenter, because that was the work Jesus did. When he came down to earth in human form, yes, he took the form of a human being to live among his people. So, he was wondering, or oh, whether he would come as his real form, the blessed form, the king of kings or God's son. So he was, he couldn't understand how he would come to meet. Papa Panav put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took down the shutters and looked out of the window. The street was desert, deserted. Deserted means empty. There was no one over there. No one was stirring yet. Means there was no movement as yet. No people were not roaming around. No one had come out of the house as yet. No one except except the road sweeper. He looked as miserable and dirty as ever and well he might. Whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day and in the raw cold and bitter freezing mist of such a morning. So everybody had a holiday on Christmas. But the sweeper had to do his work even on Christmas Day. Because he wore, it was his duty to keep the streets clean. And that too, December is a very cold season. You may have even snow and it was literally freezing. And early in the morning, even more colder. Papa Pana opened the shop door, letting in a thin stream of cold air. Come in, he shouted across the street cheerily. Come in and have some hot coffee to keep out the cold. The sweeper looked up scarcely able to believe his ears. So the sweeper was quite surprised because he came to sweep every day but he was never invited into anyone's house. And that too to have some nice hot coffee, no one really thought of him. They just looked at him, okay, he's doing his work, what's so great about it? He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove and he clasped both red hands around the comforting warm mug as he drank. So, his clothes also started feeling warm. Outside it was freezing cold, remember. So, when he came into the room, since the fire was on, the room was also warm. And he held the cup with in between both his palms. So, even his palms became warm. Papa Panna watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then, his eyes straight to the window. Straight means went back to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. 
expecting someone the sweeper asked at last. So Papa now told him his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer. Cheer means your happiness. I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And he actually smiled. So here it's quite surprising that he smiled because he used to just do his work very seriously and go away. When he had gone, Papa Pana put on cabbage soup for his dinner. Then went to the door again, scanning the street. Scanning means searching. He saw no one. But he was mistaken. Someone was coming. The girl walked so slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of shops and houses, that it was a while before he noticed her. So, <clears throat> there, he saw a girl coming and she was so tired that she couldn't even walk properly. She was literally leaning on the walls of the shops and the houses and walking very, very slowly. She looked very tired and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such sadness in her face and in the pinched little face of the baby that Papa Panav's heart went out to them. Went out to them and felt bad or sad for them. Don't, won't you come in, he called, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm by the fire and a rest. The young mother let him Shepherd her indoors. Shepherd her indoors means to guide her indoors. And to the comfort of the armchair, he, she gave a big sigh of relief. Which she was very, very relieved that she got some rest. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panav said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby from a spoon warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring home money. I'm on my way to the next village to get work. <clears throat> A sudden thought flashed through Papa Pana's mind. He remembered the little shoes he had looked at last night, but he had been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the cold little feet and made up his mind. Try these on her, he said, handing the baby and the shoes to the mother. The beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily and the baby gurgled with pleasure. Gurgled means a sound made from your throat. You have been so kind to us, the girl said, when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panna was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he had missed his visitor. <clears throat> he looked anxiously up and down the street. There was plenty of people about, but they were all faces that he recognized. There were neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished him happy Christmas. Or beggars. And Papa Panao hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a generous hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. Who is this important stranger he's talking about? He's talking about Jesus. Yes? All too soon the winter dusk fell. When Papa... Dusk means at evening time. When Papa Panao went next to the door and strained his eyes. He could no longer make out the passers-by. So he was trying to see because it was dark. There are no street lights. Yes. So it was dark and it was beginning to get dark and he couldn't see properly. Remember he's old and he was trying to see whether he had missed the visitor or had the visitor not come in the morning. Maybe he was coming now in the evening. Most were home and indoors by now anyway because remember it's Christmas day and it gets cooler or colder by evening. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters and sat down wearily on his armchair. Remember he was old and all day he had been helping the people around. So wearily means he was tired. So it had just been a dream after all. Jesus had not come. And all at once he knew that he was no longer alone in the room. There was, this was not a dream. 
for he was wide awake. At first he seemed to see before his eyes the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old sweeper, the young mother and her baby and the beggars he had fed. So he saw all of them. He had not fed just one beggar. All the beggars whom he saw he had fed them. As they passed, East whispered, Didn't you see me, Papa Panam? Who are you? He called out bewildered. Bewildered means uh, astonished, a little bit shocked. Then another voice called him. It was the voice from his dream, the voice of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me, he said. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still. Only the sound of the big clock ticking could be heard. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing Papa Panav's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So, he did come after all, was all that he said. So, this is a story by Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy. Now, what do you learn from this story? That if you really want to serve God, you should love your fellow men. You cannot say, I love God and go to church or go to pray every day and not love the people around you. Yes, it, you may just start with the people in your house. Not necessary that you go out on the street and help, start helping everyone. Start loving the people in your house first. Then, Start loving the people outside. It's no use if you don't love your, maybe your brother, your elder brother, you are angry with him, your sister, your mom, your dad, your uncles, your aunts, whoever they may be. If you cannot love them, if you cannot forgive them, you cannot love others. That will be just a show that you are putting on. So, you should show genuine concern and love for everyone around you because Every person, every living thing has been made by the same God that made you. Yes? And by serving them, you are serving God. And you are making God happy. So if you want to really serve God, don't only just pray, but also serve other people who are, especially those who are in need. And here I am not talking only of human beings. You should take care of every living thing because every living thing has been made by God. Okay. Now this lesson if you see he is giving an example of the man helping the human beings. But it would be very sad if you help the human beings and then maybe trouble the animals or trouble the birds or break the trees or something for no reason. Because all of them are made by God. And when you hurt them you are hurting God. You are hurting something that God has made. Okay, it is He is not going to be pleased with that. So always keep that in mind whenever you are going to trouble any living creature. Okay, so I will be sending you all the homework. Do it. With this, I complete your textbook portion. Thank you and do have a good day.